you know, what elite athletes value in their coaches, I think transcends gender, right? They want to know, uh, first of all, do you know your stuff? They, they really, um, they really want people who can make them better. You can't fake it with these guys. You know, you have to know what you're talking about. Uh, but then you also have to care about them as, as human beings. Those are the two things I think they all care about the most. Completely calm, sane, <laughs> rational sports parent. So everyone's going to hold me to that. Uh, no, I mean, I, I have a couple different angles on it, right? Because I've, I've just, I've interacted with gazillions of sports parents in recruiting. Um, and I'm a big believer in, you know, I think it was the New York times, you know, read an article several, several years ago. Um, you know, that what parents are supposed to say to their children is I, I love watching you play. And Steph Curry and that generation are so Killing amazing me. in so many ways, but they're probably leading to a lot of kids who are not ready to shoot three pointers, you know, going out there and, and, and hoisting, you know, 25 foot shots. Um, I was always taught, you know, when I was a, a, a kid, even before there were, you know, NBA three pointers and guys, you know, stepping in from the logo that, you know, I had really good coaches when I was young that taught skills and fundamentals. And we always were taught, you just, you start when you first get in the gym, you know, start from right underneath the basket and have your form shooting routine and you know, do it over and over and over. And then, you know, you move back and you move back and you move back. Um, I get that a group of fourth grade boys probably just, you know, wild little wild guys out there trying to run around just get up shots but and that's okay right like you know maybe you give them their time for the first you know couple minutes before the whistle blows do whatever you want but when this whistle blows we're going to work on skills and I think you can tell them that if they ever came to a Cavs game or a Warriors game or a you know Trailblazers game that when these guys do their routines their routines begin with touch shots around the rim every single time and they you know are working on fundamentals and ball handling and perfect form over and over and over and then you get to the point where you're so good at that you know routine from five feet then it becomes 10 feet then it becomes 15 and then you know Steph's shot looks the same from 25 feet that it, than it does from from four feet so I think it's probably some give and take with fourth graders you know and kind of give them their time but you're, what you're trying to do is build a love of the game and just build habits that hopefully they they continue but I literally remember my coach from when I was that young you know, having us do these drills over and over again that, you know, probably we didn't kind of like at the time, but they, they become part of your, your routine that, that never leaves you. And that's what the best players do too. I think positive coaching doesn't mean uh, never being critical or giving, giving everyone a trophy. I think it's the baseline number one of are you in coaching to make other people better? Is it about the players, you know, that you coach and, and building teams, you know, getting teams to do things as a group that individuals would not be able to do alone. Like to me, that is, you know, an amazing, you know, passion of mine and the ability to impact people. And if you're not in it for that reason, um, then I just don't think you can be the best, you know, possible coach, no matter how great your X's and O's are. The other thing is I think co coaching is very relational and, um, if you take the time to care about human beings, um, you're going to be able to coach them harder. Um, if you're, if your baseline is I'm trying to make you better, I'm trying to invest in you, that's positive. But then that does mean there are going to be days where you can say, Hey, I need you to run faster, or I need you to, you know, do this better, or I need you to work, you know, on this. Like those are, those are things you can do as a coach. But if you're, if your ultimate thing, you know, it comes from a place of caring and, and, and investment in people. And, and then lastly, I just, I think players, no matter what level they are, respond to people thinking about what they can do and setting goals on what we need to do and not what we can't do or being, you know, negative. Like that's what positive coaching is to me is like finding the strengths and then getting your team to, to execute, you know, um, those things to the highest ability.